The Machuaca River is an iconic New Zealand waterway and for the past 10 years it's been the focus of an intensive study by scientists. The goal of the Integrated Catchment Management or ICM program has been to gain better information to more effectively manage the land, water and coastal environments in catchments where there are many and potentially conflicting land uses. And to do so in a way that we understand both the complex way a catchment works and the way people work within it. Conflicts and perceptions of such things as water allocation or worsening water quality mean we need to find new ways to manage our water, land and coasts in an integrated way and to do this collaboratively. Andrew Fenimore was the ICM research program leader and he here discusses some of the historical background to water use in New Zealand and how our changing attitudes to water management are being shaped by the values we place on water and the environment and the need for integrated science to help us realise these values. Water is very much the integrating element in a catchment because everything that we do on the land affects the water. Um, so water management has increasingly come to the fore in the last uh, 40 or so years since the 1967 Water and Soil Conservation Act. And I think in New Zealand we've moved from the phase of looking to our rivers to take water, then we found groundwater resources and discovered that those had limits. Now we're in a phase of looking at um, water storage as a solution and more efficient use of the water that's um, available in the rivers and aquifers. So it's more of a, an integrated approach that's needed. So one of the things we've learned about water management in the integrated catchment management research is that um, all of these interconnections are, are important to appreciate. Uh, we understand, for example, that pumping groundwater affects uh, the life of fish in the river, but it goes much further than that. And we need to be thinking about what are the impacts on Maori cultural values of taking water out of the river and putting those alongside, for example, the economic benefits of all the uh, irrigation and water use and development that water can provide. Uh, equally, um, <coughs> taking water out and then uh, applying it to the land as irrigation, um, for example, on the cabbages behind us, um, <laughs> that has consequences for groundwater which are unseen, water quality consequences. Uh, and those can feed back through to the river systems. Everything is connected. So critical to managing water is understanding both the, the science behind the occurrence of water, whether it's um, from the rain or on the land, down the rivers or under the ground, uh, as well as people's aspirations for the use of water, the values that they hold for water. Joseph Thomas is a water resource scientist at Tasman District Council and as part of the ICM research has been working to understand the integrated, interconnected and dynamic way water flows through the landscape. This understanding enables better water management and allocation and Joseph says this required a truly interdisciplinary approach. The, the council had some key questions and hence the research questions were a combination of the council's key questions and equally what the researchers wanted to know as well from a national and international benefit viewpoint. You know, there's a lot of input on a whole lot of disciplines that have come into where we've got to in terms of the modelling. Uh, freshwater ecology calls for more critical because the river holds a lot of values apart from just water for consumptive use. Also the work that Landcare did in terms of looking at the crop crop water needs, the soil, the infiltration ability, all that fed into the model. To create what's called the finite element model, Joseph and his team combined all of the information about water resources in the catchment. The model shows the interconnections and illustrates clearly how stress on one area of the water supply could impact on other areas within the catchment. In the past, you know, people have purely looked at resources as surface water, lake water, groundwater. Well, the models really show you how well connected or how connected the water resource system is. And, uh, that suddenly makes you realise it's, it's not just what I see that is important, but what I can't see is also important. In, in terms of the fundamental research, there's a whole lot of disciplines of research that were put into it, from geology, hydrology, soil, ecology, community, uh, and, and you know the, the modelling itself, the numerical part of it. So it's a whole range of science and disciplines came into providing the source information. Uh, as far as I know, nobody else in the world has attempted to do a finite element model at this kind of scale, you know. And Joseph says the model can be further refined by showing how the expectations of different interest groups in different parts of the catchment would impact on someone else. So, 
when the council goes and consults, you know, it gets a set of values that the community wants to protect. Now, those then become the constraints. So we can then put the constraints that the community wants into the model and, 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 and apply pressure to the model, like if we take more water here, either from the river or groundwater, if we plant more trees here, what is going to happen to the system? So whenever we get to the point that the constraint is hit, then you know what the limits are, whether how much water you can pump from the river or how much water you can pump from the bores, or if you plant too many trees and how much water is going to be depleted that's flowing into the rivers. So the model is after all a tool that enables constraints to be put that the community sets, that then we can go back and say this is what you can allow to take from a river if you want to keep trout in that river. This is what you can allow to be taken if you actually want to swim in the river. Uh, you know, this is how much you can take to irrigate crops or take water for some other use, um, you know, if you were to provide for all of this, you know. And the model needs to be accessible and provide real answers. Uh, what you put out to the community needs to be concise. It's got to be understandable. Uh, when a person in the catchment understands what you're trying to do, you're going to get far more buy-in than writing very complicated, sophisticated things because people think you're fudging it. It's got to be doable. Anything you write has got to be doable. Why write something that you can physically can't do? And you have to involve all parties. I mean, managing water from the farmers to the people who live in the valley to interest groups to statutory bodies like Fish and Game, Iwi and Dock. And one of the tools that we've used here, which has been very successful, is this water user groups. And the water user groups, you really need to empower them. And empowering them is more so giving them the information, because when someone can look at the information, understand it in a simple way, uh, most often the conclusions they form about that particular resource is no different from a very complicated high-end scientist or policy planner. And, 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 and that's the whole thing, you know, the simplicity of the information and the information is being real, uh, allows people to appreciate what they've got when they understand at a basic level how it works it makes them accept options for managing it better. Mary Ann Baker is a policy planner with the Tasman District Council and says the finite element model helps set limits on water allocation throughout the catchment. So understanding science needs a fair bit of effort and we've got some wonderful tools now that help understand, that help the scientists understand what we're dealing with and help communicate that understanding to our stakeholders and to the council as well. And they're visually engaging and as we know people learn or understand in different ways and, and having those visual tools to explain to people makes a big difference in, in helping them understand what we're doing. Water in a river catchment is a complex issue and it's important to understand the interconnections between resources in order to best manage them. And they're not static, they need to be revisited. The process of learning about a system and, and looking at what the effects of activities that we do on those systems is it could be seen as an iterative, iterative cycle. Um, we, come, we come back in a circular kind of process to looking at what information we have, what is it that we're doing that affects the systems that we're monitoring, what more information do we need. So it, it's, a, it's a circle that we, we go through. Marianne says the science of the ICM program has helped set policy that attempts to balance everyone's needs and expectations. We all know that water is valuable. It's valuable where it is in the river. It provides habitat for the fish. It's, it's an opportunity for recreation. It's got intrinsic value just by being there. But it's also got economic value. There's demand for water, for irrigation, to add value to crops, to add economic um, strength to communities. It's social well-being. So there is, there is a, a need for the council to work out well, just how much water is there available, um, how much do we leave in the stream for these other values that depend on it being there, and how much can we take out without compromising the values we've, we've identified. Once the amount of available water has been established, allocation can be decided. But setting limits requires input from many stakeholders. In setting thresholds, we sometimes have to make decisions around trading off values. Is it the economic benefit of taking the water out or is it the, the other more intrinsic values of leaving the water in the river? So there are, there are issues around um, 
costs and benefits. So in making decisions around trade-offs, there are a whole range of stakeholders that have an interest in where we set those limits and thresholds. And it's important we involve the community in making those decisions. We aim to make sure that the community knows, has the information, the science and the understanding around the issues to help set those thresholds and those limits. And it, and it helps to avoid future conflict and, and avoid environment court proceedings if we can establish those baselines at the beginning. And she says the ICM research program provided a great opportunity to approach water management problems from a wider viewpoint. The whole discipline around integrated catchment management and thinking about issues from various perspectives and getting people with various skills to look at things together was, was a really good um, opportunity here in Tasman and I think an example of how to look at problems at a wider scale as well. We've really moved from being a bunch of technocrats sitting in an office uh, doing science and then writing policy about it to uh, really uh, working with people to understand their values and it's been really inspiring to see how people respond when you involve them in water management questions and they have some of the answers themselves. I think we're tremendously lucky in New Zealand in that the water management aspects of integrated catchment management have solutions uh, and they're solutions where we can achieve a balance between all those values around water and land uh, that we've been speaking about and those are solutions where everyone can actually appreciate uh, a positive outcome. Water management is actually a, a, an adaptive process, it's an iterative process if you like. And, and the reason I say that is because even if we had perfect technical knowledge about our water resources and our land resources, um, the work would not be done because people's values for water, people's values for water change over time. And uh, involving them in uh, water management is an ongoing task and that requires the involvement of everyone, it requires passion, it requires engagement. Um, so together we can actually achieve uh, a really sustainable outcome and one that adapts to all those changing circumstances. And that's key to integrated catchment management.